Remember that what we're trying to do now is we're trying to learn how trig functions are useful. How do trig functions help you to figure things out? Remember a while ago I said that there's two types of problems that trig functions can help us with. Sometimes we're given one side and one angle, and then we can use trig functions to figure out everything else about the triangle, all the other sides and all the other angles. And sometimes we're given two sides of the triangle and no angles. And then again, we can use trig functions to find the other side and the, um, all the angles. What have we done so far? Well, we've finished this portion of our coverage. Um, in all the problems that we've been doing so far, I've given you one side and one angle. And we've used trig functions to figure out everything else. Um, and now we're going to move on to this topic. Um, however, um, as usual, let me remind you that there's no point moving on unless you've really mastered this topic over here. There's no point moving on unless you've really mastered um, everything that we've covered so far. Uh, now, we did quite a few examples uh, covering one side and one angle. And it's possible that some of you might have started to, to feel that those were pretty easy and kind of boring. Well, I hope so. That was my goal. The problems that I gave you here were very, very easy problems. All the problems that I've given you so far in these videos are very easy problems. I'll say that one more time. All the problems that I've given you so far were very easy um, uh, problems, so I hope that you were bored by them. Um, those were just um, techniques that you're going to be having to use to solve harder problems. But all the problems that we've just done so far are things that you need to be able to get um, to the point where you can do very quickly. Um, so you need to keep practicing those problems until they are boringly easy for you. Um, so if, uh, if those problems were already boringly easy for you, great, you're ready to go on. But if the problems are not boringly easy for you yet, you should go back and redo these. And maybe you should go to your textbook and try to find other similar problems. You need to practice these problems over and over until they are boringly easy and you can solve them confidently and quickly. Because we're not talking about the hard parts of physics right here. We're talking about the easy parts. If we haven't really mastered these easy parts, there's no way we're going to be able to deal with the hard parts. So make sure you really master this material. Uh, before you move on to cover this next portion of the maturity. Now that we've finished learning <coughs> how to deal with problems where we're given one side and one angle, we will proceed to the next type of problem. We want to learn how we can use trig functions uh, when we're given two of the sides and nothing else about a, tri a right triangle. When we're given two sides of a right triangle, we should uh, ask ourselves how we can use trig functions to find the other information about the triangle. So now we're going to go on to cover this type of problem. How can we figure stuff out about uh, right triangles where we're given two of the sides? Here's a right triangle, and I'm going to tell you that the length of this side is 3, and the length of this side is 5. And now, um, and this is a right triangle, uh, and now please figure out how big is this angle and how long is this side. The question marks indicate the questions. We need to figure out how big is this angle and how big is this side. Please pause the video and give that a shot. Uh, however, um, maybe you shouldn't give it too long of a shot because this problem involves some techniques we haven't gone over yet. So if you haven't already learned how to do this type of problem, you might get stuck. So if you get stuck, just start the video again and we'll go through it together. Can you see that this problem is different from the previous problems that we worked on? Remember in the previous uh, problems, I was giving you one side and one angle. But here I'm just giving you two sides and no angles. Of course, you always know the right angle, but we're not given any of the other, either of the other two angles. So now we have to learn how to do a new type of problem. How do you solve the problem when you're just given two sides? First of all, um, I'm going to use some asterisks here to indicate the information we were given. That's something that we were doing on the previous sets of problems anyway, using asterisks to indicate the given information. Remember that the convention is that we're going to try to figure out each of these questions using just the information we were originally given. Now, something else I'm going to do is I'm going to put an asterisk on this angle. Even though we weren't given it, this asterisk doesn't mean we were given this angle, but remember that we also use an asterisk to indicate the angle that we're focusing on. We might, some problems we might focus on this angle, and some problems we might focus on this angle. Well, obviously in this problem, we're focusing on this angle down here. So I'm going to put this asterisk in, not because we've been given this, we haven't, but just because this is our way of also remembering which angle we're focusing on. So I'm using the, this asterisk in a slightly different sense than these. Uh, I hope that won't confuse us. 
Uh, but we know that we've been getting into the habit of always marking the angle that we're focusing on. Well, clearly it makes sense to focus on the angle that the question was about, not the angle that the question was not about. All right, we can figure out um, either of these questions, but let's actually start by figuring this out. Um, maybe I'll go ahead and label the sides here. So this side here would be adjacent to the asterisk. This side is opposite to the asterisk. And this side is the hypotenuse because it's opposite to the 90 degree angle. So let's start by finding the hypotenuse. Now we are not going to use the trig functions to find the hypotenuse. We're not going to use trig functions to find the hypotenuse. Instead, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. We're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, let me remind you or tell you what the Pythagorean theorem says. The Pythagorean theorem tells us that the hypotenuse squared is equal to one of the legs squared plus the other leg squared. The hypotenuse squared equals one leg squared plus the other leg squared. This is a, a theorem or a fact in geometry, and we're just going to take this on faith. Um, so we're not going to prove that this is true, um, so I'm just going to ask you to trust me and trust Pythagoras that if you take one leg and square it and add another leg and square it, that will give you the square of the hypotenuse. We're just going to see how we can use this to solve the problem. Uh, maybe you can already see, though, why this is the right formula to use. Um, because we're trying to figure out the hypotenuse, and we were told both legs. We know these two legs, so clearly this is a good formula to figure out the hypotenuse when you already know both legs. So let's plug in. What should I plug in for the hypotenuse? Well, I don't know the hypotenuse, so I won't plug in anything for that. What should I plug in for one of the legs? Well, one of the legs had a length of 3. Don't forget to square it. And the other leg had a length of 5. Don't forget to square that. Uh, of course, if you wanted to, you could have said, instead of 3 squared plus 5 squared, if you felt like it, you could have said 5 squared plus 3 squared. That makes no difference. 3 squared is 9. 5 squared is 25. 9 plus 25 is 34. So we've ended up with the hypotenuse squared equals 34. But we're not done yet because we don't really care about the hypotenuse squared, we care about the hypotenuse. Well, what we're trying to do is solve this equation for the hypotenuse term. Solve the equation for the hypotenuse term. That means um, we have to keep rearranging the equation until the hypotenuse term is by itself. We need to rearrange this equation until the hypotenuse term is by itself. Well, it's almost by itself. The only thing that's uh, messing us up is this pesky square. The hypotenuse is not by itself yet because it's being squared. So we need to do something to the equation to get rid of the square. Well, we've already seen the key principle for getting things by themselves. The way you get rid of something is by doing the opposite. If there's something we need to get rid of, we do the opposite. Well, what's the opposite of squaring? What's the opposite of squaring? The opposite of squaring is square rooting. So let's take the square root of both sides. Well, what's the square root of the left-hand side? Well, the square root of the left-hand side is just the hypotenuse term by itself. That's why we were taking the square root to get rid of this square. But remember the golden rule of algebra, if we take the square root of the left-hand side, we must take the square root of the right-hand side. Otherwise, we are not working legally. So we have to take the square root of the right-hand side because we took the square root of the left-hand side to get rid of the square. Now, actually, um, every number has two square roots, positive and negative. Do we want the positive or the negative square root? Well, we're working here with geometry and lengths. Um, in geometry, there are no negative lengths, so it, it wouldn't make sense to take the negative square root. We want the positive square root. Uh, and now we have to get our calculator and find the square root of 34. Uh, the square root of 34 is 5.8. Of course, we're using positive 5.8. And now we can label that that hypotenuse was 5.8. I'm not going to put an asterisk, though, here, because this is not something we were given. It's something we figured out. The asterisks remind us of the information we were originally given. OK, so now we've learned something new. Uh, we've learned that if you know two, uh, two of the sides, you can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the remaining side. If you know two sides, you can find the Pythagorean theorem to find the remaining sides. There was no need to use sine, cosine, or tangent here. 
Uh, if you know two sides, you don't need sine, cosine, or tangent to find the third side. You can just use the Pythagorean theorem because this relates all three sides to each other. <coughs>